God bless you today. Pray your day is going well. This is 10 Minute Midday Matter, 10 minutes in the Word of God, blessing your lunch hour. I pray your day is going well and all is good in the name of Jesus. We're going to continue today in the book of Acts. We're in chapter number 12 today. That'll be coming right up. Amen. God bless you today. We thank God for you being with us today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, bless somebody with the word of God on today. We pray your day is going well. I'm Pastor Christopher Harrison. All of our contact information is at the bottom of your screen. All of our social media outlets are in the lower corner. Connect with us, join us, and you're welcome to be with us in our services anytime the doors are open, namely 10.30 a.m. on Sundays at 420 South Pollard Street. Amen. God bless you today. Today we're looking at Acts chapter number 12. We're going to see what the word details to us about the happenings of the church in the book of the actions of the apostles. About that time, in verse 1, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivered him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made by God uh, to God by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and centuries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood next to him and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them on its own accord. And they went out and went along one street. And immediately the angel left him. And when Peter came to himself, he said, now, I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, tell these things to James and the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. And when day came, there was no little disturbance among the soldiers over what it had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and did not find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord. And having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon his throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting the voice of God and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory. And he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. But the word of the Lord, word of God, increased and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. 
Amen. Uh, so we see this passage here in uh, chapter number 12. We see that uh, the apostles are making headway into doing what uh, God had required and the word of God was spreading. And so this is also troublesome to Herod who began uh, to make mockery. And so we have the first instance of martyrdom uh, amongst the apostles. And that is uh, James, who was one of the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Thunder, the brother of John. And we understand that there were uh, two James, James, the brother of Jesus and James, the brother of John. James, the brother of Jesus was the lesser or the younger. Um, and then James, the brother of John was the great or the greater uh, or the older. Um, and so uh, the older, the great, James, the brother of John was killed with the sword. And because of that, Herod saw how people loved it, loved the violence, loved the situation, hadn't learned through what had happened to Jesus Christ. But uh, it gave him more boldness to do what he wanted to do. And so he grabbed Peter and Peter was locked under two chains under double lock and key with centuries guarding. Um, but the angel of the Lord came and freed him from prison uh, with the chains just even falling from his uh, hands. Uh, the angel of the Lord woke him up and uh, led him out of the prison and into the city and down the street into the house um, where Rhoda met him uh, at the door. Peter didn't realize what was going on. He was, uh, some people say half in a stupor or, or half sleep, half awake, thought he was seeing a vision, but realized eventually that it was the angel of the Lord that was leading him through into the um, uh, to freedom, and so when he got there and Rhoda answered the door, uh, she didn't even uh, necessarily believe. She even left him at the door, um, but she told the told the people in the house uh, that were praying um, that Peter was at the door, and even the people that were praying for Peter to be free didn't believe. Because you can imagine that they felt that once Peter had gotten captured, that he was all but uh, dead. Knowing what Herod had already done to their brother, they mourning uh, the loss and, and the martyrdom of James. They can imagine and probably had already imagined the evil that had become of Peter. And so they said she was out of her mind, saying that it was his angel, meaning that he had died and his spirit had come to the door, uh, but Peter knocked again and everyone opened the door and uh, realized that it really was him. And so he had to explain to them that it was God. It was the Lord that freed him. And uh, he quickly went, as he said, to another place. And so it's something for you to be praying for something and then realize that uh, your prayer is answered even uh even when you don't have full faith, even when you don't have full belief in what was going on, uh, you preach several messages and talk about several portions of this, but of this scripture, but the miracle that takes place before your expectation reaches faith is, is something God does some things, even when we don't believe it. Uh, and he still gets the glory. He still gets the glory. Um, and so to get a glimpse of how, how harsh Herod was, he killed the soldiers uh, that lost uh, Peter. And uh, the writer here gives us insight into what happened to Herod. Uh, Herod was one who uh, ended up uh, being struck down because of his uh, high-mindedness. Um, he delivered a speech and allowed the people to pump him up. You got to be careful what you accept and what praise you accept from people. I don't care if you do it superficially or not. Make sure you always give God the glory. These people told him you are the voice of God and not of a man. Immediately the angel struck him down because he did not give God 
the glory. And we have to make sure no matter what we do, I don't care if we feel like we did it of our own ability or intellect, it still all comes from God. And we just got to make sure that we don't have no confidence in our own selves, but realize that it is of God. Or we can find ourselves struck down, find ourselves soon losing everything that God has given us. So with the defeat of Herod or the, the annihilation or death of Herod, and and the continued miracles wrought by the apostles, uh, the word of God multiplied. And the word of God increased. And as much as people wanted to stop it, it continued going forward. And so we have to learn the lesson, uh, just like the lesson they learned in a few chapters of God. If it is of, is of God, it's going to stand. Uh, lest we be found fighting against the very uh, God. So, so we got to be careful what we try to cut down and what we try to cut short, uh, cause we could be boxing against God. Saul, Paul found that out, ran into the Lord on the road to Damascus and Herod and his, uh, conceitedness brought about his own end, which was death. I believe Paul thanks God for the chance to turn his life around and boy, did he do it. But we thank God for the word of God. Thank God for you being with us on today. And we praying uh, that the word of God is life to you to know that God will take care of you. And if you do the work of God, he'll take care of you. Uh, they can lock you up. They can do everything. But God will take care. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. It's my prayer in Jesus name.